bayonet charge by Ted Hughes follows the account of an individual soldier as he fights against his enemy. Ted Hughes was one of the most significant British poets of the 20th century. He grew up in West Riding in Yorkshire and has been described by friends as a core of energy, so bright and so fierce that it burned out all those he encountered. Hughes studied English at Cambridge University, although in his third year he switched courses to study archaeology and anthropology instead, as he felt that his English studies were holding him back from his poetry. Hughes had a real thirst for life. He took risks, had strong opinions, and lived a jubilant, yet at times very tragic and tormented lifestyle. Ted Hughes was very popular and very well known, and he had lots of famous literary friends one of whom was Seamus Heaney, who often came to him in awe and for inspiration. His poetry offers a powerful and clarifying study, richly layered and compelling. Hugh's father served in conflict and Hughes himself grew up during World War II. Perhaps this became a large influence on this poem and the visual comparison between the perception of war versus the brutal reality of war. Although Hughes himself was too young to fight in World War II, Dennis Walder described him as a war poet at one remove, writing out of the impact of memory, the individual memory of his father and the collective memory of English culture. Finally, it's important to remember that they described World War I to be the war to end all wars. This will help us to detect some of the irony and futility later on. Before we read the poem itself, it's important to summarise the basic narrative to start our understanding of the poem itself. Ted Hughes's poem, Bayonet Charge, describes a soldier's desperate experience of fighting against the enemy. Hughes accentuates the brutal reality of war and the fear and confusion felt by those who signed up. Bayonet Charge also subtly mirrors the shift in public mood during the war, from nervous excitement in the beginning to the grief and depression by the end. Let's have a listen to the poem. Suddenly he awoke and was running, raw in raw seemed hot khaki, his sweat heavy, stumbling across a field of clods towards a green hedge that dazzled with rifle fire, hearing bullets smacking the belly out of the air. He lugged a rifle numb as a smashed arm, the patriotic tear that had brimmed in his eye, sweating like molten iron from the centre of his chest. In bewilderment, then, he almost stopped. In what cold clockwork of stars and the nations was he the hand pointing that second? He was running like a man who has jumped up in the dark and runs, listening between the footfalls for the reason of his still running, and his foot hung like statuary in mid-stride. Then the shot slashed furrows threw up a yellow hair that rolled like a flame and crawled in a threshing circle, its mouth wide open silent, its eyes standing out. He plunged past with his bayonet towards the green hedge, king, honour, human dignity, etc., dropped like luxuries in a yelling alarm to get out of that blue crackling air, his terror's touchy dynamite. We're now going to have a closer look at the poem line by line, but please remember that there is so much you can say about this poem and so many different interpretations, many of which will be personal to you. So please do listen to what I say, but use it to form your own interpretation when reading the poem. The poem starts in media res with suddenly, meaning we start fully immersed in the action. It's like we are living the experience and, like a soldier, we are too confused, fearful and panicked right from the very outset. Take a closer look at the adjectives Hughes uses here, as they really heighten this soldier's sense of panic, fear and confusion, almost making it seem hopeless that he can survive in such conditions. The description of how he awoke and was running is particularly interesting. We can read this in two different ways. Perhaps the soldier has been so drained and exhausted by war that he lives in a sort of sleepy daze, or perhaps he's metaphorically waking up to the realities of war. 
It's important to take note of the alliteration and sibilance here. There's just so much of it, it becomes quite claustrophobic. Think about what the sounds might represent. The H, for example, he, hot, heavy, hedge, could be representative of the heavy breathing the soldiers were having to take as they ran through the chaos of the fighting. Do also notice the image of the dazzling rifle fire. It's a bit of a paradox. Perhaps it heightens a sense of chaos and disorientation, but also the excitement that comes with warfare. The running, the stumbling, the dazzling, it really gives us this clumsy, fearful, hopelessly chaotic reality of war. Hughes uses a lot of sensory imagery throughout this poem, perhaps to show how senses are heightened when we fear something. We definitely can see this through the bullet smacking, the constant rifle fire, the clockwork, the footfalls, etc. The metaphor of how he lugged a rifle numb as a smashed arm is particularly harrowing. The smashed arm in particular is very violent and aggressive, yet lugged suggests that his movements are automatic and almost presents connotations of heaviness or despondence. Hughes presents another powerful paradox here in the image of the patriotic tear. A soldier would have been perceived to be brave and noble in the eyes of patriotism. However, here we're presented with that brutal juxtaposition in the reality of war. The fact that the tear is brimming in the corner of his eye again could have a double meaning. Perhaps the soldier can't cry or is too scared to do so. Perhaps to cry is to admit the failure of the lie they signed up to. A volcano erupts molten iron, so the metaphor here of having this sweating inside the soldier's chest could illustrate how the soldier might physically or psychologically explode at any minute. Here, Hughes highlights the psychological and physical effects of fighting in a war. And then Hughes hits us with the turning point of the poem. In bewilderment then, he almost stopped. An incredibly powerful and meaningful line. The soldier is in bewilderment, meaning he's confused or perplexed, and is in this state of mind that he almost stops. Hughes forces us as the reader to stop as well in the dash, and this just further emphasises the harrowing image. The soldier, for a split second, reflects on the futility of war and the fragility of his own life. Perhaps a reference to him being the second hand for the cold clockwork of stars and nations could reiterate the speed at which time is passing by whilst he's fighting. The questioning here is particularly significant and it shows the confused and bewildered mindset of the soldiers as perhaps here is the point that they realise the lies they've been told when they signed up for war. Notice that Hughes uses a simile here. He was running like a man. It's particularly interesting to note the comparison to the man in the poem to this man used in the simile, jumping in the dark. This shows a real sense of detachment. Perhaps the soldier detaches himself from his own identity or from others fighting in the war. But this man in the simile, like a man, is the man jumping in the dark. Again, that gives us the association of somebody who's panicking or fearful. Again, we have that questioning here as he wonders why he is still running towards his perhaps imminent death. Statuary means like a statue. So his foot is hung in moments of being like a statue. Hughes physically and metaphorically pauses his poem here as the soldier and reader have a moment of realisation. Here we've reached the crux of the poem. This is the soldier's realisation that perhaps war isn't what he thought it was going to be. We as the reader start to see his bewilderment and confusion form into almost an epiphany. And it's this moment that we start to understand the brutal reality of what he's going through, mentally and physically. Starting here with then, we're reminded that we're still very much in the action. The yellow hair here could be real or imagined but it's important to notice how it's being treated. It's thrown up, it's rolling through the flames. 
This could be a real animal that's being caught up in the chaos of war, or he could be a metaphor for the soldiers and the injuries they face. Hughes uses a lot of colours in this poem to visually represent the colours of war. Perhaps the yellow hair then is in reference to this hair on fire. This is accompanied by the graphic and visual image of the rabbit crawling, its mouth wide open silent and its eyes standing out. The mouth wide open silent is oxymoronic. It usually represents somebody shouting or making a sound, but the mouth being open yet silent could perhaps show the fear of revealing the true horrors of war, effectively going against the patriotism and speaking out against it. And after this moment of realisation and seeing this maybe real or metaphorical hair, the soldier then plunges past with his bayonet straight towards his enemy. The plunging here could be in excitement, could be a burst of energy, or it could be the desperation of the soldier. Hughes finishes with this incredibly important line, king, honour, human dignity, etc. The etc that follows words that could have and should have meant something to him shows that now war has become meaningless, just like these words and just like the reason he signed up in the first place. They're saying that these once really important concepts now just drop like luxuries, like something meaningless and not needed. Here we're reminded of the irony in Tennyson's line, ours not to reason why, ours but to do and die in the charge of the Light Brigade. This shows the complete reality and opposite of what that meant to soldiers. As we reflect now on some of the key phrases and images created by Hughes, we can think about his key message of war and what it meant to the individual soldier fighting in it. Another incredibly powerful poem. But we're now gonna have a look at some of the big ideas. Because remember, in your exam, you compare big ideas. We don't compare poems line by line, and we definitely don't compare poetic devices. Also remember that there's so much more you can say about this poem, and so many more points that you can come up with yourself. So I'm just going to talk through a few examples to get you started. Hughes presents the brutal reality of war through the individual experience of a soldier. Hughes highlights the futility of war and the fragility of life. Hughes hints at the violence and suffering of war. Hughes conveys the physical and psychological torment of war. And Hughes illustrates the loss of identity and control as a result of war. Try to reflect on some of the other poems from the Power and Conflict cluster and see if you can start to make those connections between the big ideas. Perhaps Charge of the Light Brigade does the exact opposite of what Hughes wanted to portray in his poem. Does the soldier's experience and exposure replicate that of the soldier in Bayonet Charge? You get the idea. I hope you've enjoyed the session for today and I hope it's inspired you to go away and read more of Ted Hughes's poetry. He really was an incredible poet and writer. Thank you very much for listening and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.